Today's question comes from Mark Davenport, and Mark asks, I upgraded from a Ryzen 9 5950X. Mark, come here. Let's take a walk. I upgraded from a Ryzen 9 5950X to a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. Okay, let's just read the question and, and address this. I have something to say. For AAA single player gaming, especially simulation games, as well as heavy internet usage, Excel and Acrobat. I can tell the 7800X3D is a big upgrade for my use case. In a build with a 4090, would you have advised that I get a 7950X3D instead? Does it even matter given that I'll be upgrading my CPU in socket before long? Thanks. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. My standard default advice. I'm going to answer this several different ways. Yes, there's a 3D chip on the desk. Woo! My standard default advice is don't side grade. What Mark did is a side grade. He went from a slower 16 core chip to a faster eight core chip. He got faster cores, but fewer of them. It will improve his situation in some cases. Depends upon his use case. Everything comes down to use case. It is entirely possible that Mark wasn't using 16 cores before, he overbought his previous CPU and it was just being wasted. That does happen. And in that particular scenario, it may not be necessary. Having said that, if you have RTX 4090 money, why are you buying anything but an i9 or an R9? You spent $1,600 on a video card. Okay, back up a second. To everyone watching this video, I'm gonna put my Dave Ramsey hat on for just a minute. The only people who should be buying RTX 4090s are A, people who make money with their computer and the 4090 will help you make more money because of its speed, or B, rich people who can just pay cash for it. If Visa and MasterCard are involved in any way other than getting your airline miles or cash back, you can't afford a 4090, nor should you be buying one. The $320 RX 6700 XT is a phenomenal value for the money and a way better deal. The $500 6800 XT is a great deal. The $750 7900 XT is a great deal. The 4090 is awesome. I, I have actually two of them now. I have a Gigabyte Gaming Aorus and I've got an MSI Gaming X Trio. I'm a tech reviewer, which is why I have them. Would I buy one if I was just gaming? That's hard to say. I've bought a lot of high-end graphics cards in the past and typically they age, they lose their value very, very quickly. And the downside to doing so is that you're, you're spending a lot of money. Now, if you have a high-end monitor, you kind of have to. If you've got a 4K 144 hertz monitor, well, you probably need to buy a 4090 every time. They're not the value play. The value play is buying something for less money that can still last you for a little while, which is not a 4070 or 4070 Ti. It's a 6700 XT, even a 1440p gaming. So you've got 4090 money. You didn't buy a Ryzen 9. However... Does it even matter given that I'll be upgrading my CPU in socket before long? That's an interesting point. And I will give Mark a 50% pass on this because I don't think a 4090 should be installed on a 5950X. It's too much graphics card for that CPU. I mean, I understand why you upgraded. I, that's a huge upgrade, even at 4K. Even at 4K, a 5950X is going to bottleneck an RTX 4090. You, you absolutely need to be on Zen 4 or Raptor Lake. That, I mean, it's, it's amazing. That thing is so fast. It is, 
it's sort of like you look at the the line of graphics cards and it's, oh it's okay 6000 series 7000 series 30 series 40 series oh the 49 is over here i mean it's it's really in a league of its own so you needed an upgrade to fully utilize a 4090 but zen 4 zen 5 may be out next year am5 is going to get zen 5 it may very well get Zen 6. Who knows? Maybe it'll get Zen 7. We'll see what AMD does. Unlike the first generation boards on AM4, the 300 series, which were crap, the first generation 600 series boards from AMD actually seem really good. I have a X670E ProArt Creator Asus board, and it is decked out. That's my personal gaming PC. I have a 7950X at home, and it's got USB 4, Thunderbolt, 10 gig Ethernet networking. It's got four M.2 slots. It's got a gazillion USB ports besides the, the two USB 4 ports, the Type C's. It's got, holy smokes, it's got 20 phase power delivery that could run a nuclear submarine. It's insane. But I bought that board because I'm running under the presumption that as soon as Zen 5 comes out, I'll drop it in there. And if Zen 6 comes out, I'll drop it in there. And whenever we get to the last chip that's supported by AM5, probably a 3D chip, I'll just get whatever the best chip is, drop it in, and see how long I can ride it. My hope is I can keep that build for longer than my last one. My last build was an i9-9900K, aged poorly, at least for my purposes. I have multiple monitors. I multitask very heavily and eight cores kind of aged out. Although it did last me a while. I put that machine together six months ago. So four and a half years. Although I didn't build it when it launched. Separate story. I'm a YouTuber. So I have a lot of machines, but good CPU, but eight cores kind of is pretty entry level these days. How many of you thought we'd be making that statement in 2016 when I started my YouTube channel? Yes, eight cores is going to be very entry level one of these days. 175 bucks will get you an eight core CPU. And it's fine if you're a basic user. And that's kind of my complaint about the 7800X3D. Eight cores for 450 bucks. Let me just say that again. Eight cores for, for 450 bucks in 2023. Now, if the 7800X3D were $300, Maybe 350, I'd feel differently. At 300, I'd be recommending it actually. It, it's at 300, I'm okay with it. Okay, it's still only eight cores, but price affects everything. I think the i3 12100F for $58, which is what I paid for it off of Newegg. Now it's a third party seller, but it was off of Newegg. 58 bucks for four cores, eight threads. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That thing's a beast. That thing makes the old i3 10100F Wait, oh, I'm not, I don't have the F version. I have the non-F. That's our video capture PC. So I have experience with that i3, four cores, eight threads. And of course, then the i7 7700K. The i3 12100F is dramatically faster and noticeably better than the older four core chips from Intel. Normally, I'd be like, what kind of an idiot would buy a four core chip in 2023? $58. Go on. Now I like it. Now I see a value for that. Now you can put together a really nice $500 gaming PC. B660M motherboard, a RX 6600 for $179, a one terabyte NVMe boot drive, a five or 600 watt power supply, a 50 or $60 El Cheapo case. Use the included cooler. I am, I have used the, they've improved. If you knock Intel stock coolers, they are much better than they used to be. I am using the stock cooler that came with my i3 12100F. 50 degrees, no big deal. Oh my goodness, it's great. No issues whatsoever. It, it's quiet, it's cool. Even under full load, there's no reason to spend two pennies on a cooler with the i3. Now, would that cooler cool an i7? No, i3 is fine. So I don't like eight cores for $450. However, if you are going to buy a Zen 5, I get it. This is a Ryzen 9 7950X, which is what Mark is asking about. Should he have bought this instead? The downside to this CPU 
This was $650. It was 700 MSRP. I, it was a daily deal on Amazon. I got it for 650. This is gonna lose a lot of value in the next year. This is, this will not retain its value at all. And it will lose way more in terms of total dollars than the 7800X 3D will. If you plan to go Zen 5, I get it, but I would have encouraged you to potentially consider the 7700X if you wanted to go that route because that'll lose a whole lot less value. That's 300, it's $150 less, but that's, that's fair. The interesting thing is if you went Intel, the advice is easier. i9-13900K. If you have 4090 money, that's the only CPU in the Raptor Lake lineup that you should be buying. And since there's no future upgrade path, you just get the best CPU for the socket and you ride it out for as long as you can. But with an upgrade path, it gets complicated. I'm not actually used to having to think about that quite as much. We didn't really see the path of AM4 until we got towards the end. And then AMD tried to fudge it and say, well, yeah, but you won't be able to install Zen 3 on the 300 series boards and you won't be able to, this, only these boards will support these chips and these boards will support, the, and they, they muddied the waters and the community had a conniption. AMD wisely went, hold on, maybe we can make that work after, oh yeah, we'll make that work. And they did. Since AMD realized that that was an issue, I have seen much better compatibility. I have put 5,000 series chips on 300 series boards. It used to suck. Heck, Zen 2 chips, 3,000 series on 300 series boards used to suck. I've had all kinds of problems in the past doing it. In the past year, I have now done it on several of my systems and it has gone flawlessly. So whatever old issues they had, they clearly went, okay, we have to fix this. And they fixed it. So credit to AMD for buying a clue and doing the right thing. So this is gonna lose a lot of value. I would not personally have bought this if I didn't have a tech YouTube channel. Um, it just, it, it doesn't make any sense, especially since I already have a 7950X, but we have a tech YouTube channel, so I bought it. Mark, I understand what you did and why. I don't blame you. For $200 more, you could have had the 16 core version. And then you could have kept that the secondary system for a very, 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 very long time. The problem with the A-Core chip is it'll be useless for everything at some point in the future. Even basic tasks. I'm, we use an i3-10100 for our video capture PC, and it can do exactly one thing at a time. It captures videos. So There's nothing else. And it's fine. I don't need to replace it tomorrow. But it's useless for anything else. Our front desk PC used to have a Ryzen 5 3400G four core, eight thread chip in it. That's used for printing labels and eBay and emails and basic tasks. There's no video card in there. We use the APU portion of it. I recently replaced that with a Ryzen 7 5700G. Wow, seriously, wow. The difference between four cores and eight cores and Zen Plus and Zen 3 on our front desk email machine that browses the web and prints and scans and uh, we do have a multifunction machine attached to it and whatnot. It's almost slap you upside the head with the cold wet fish levels of improvement. Zen 4 is not that much of an improvement over Zen 3 except if you have an RTX 4090 and you're doing simulation games and it's okay, it, it, yeah, sure. I'm not excited about your choice, but I understand your choice. Mark, thanks for the question. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, 
paste the key provided by URCD keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well.